we uh, talked about the, the systems, um, so I, I described them verbally. Uh, we looked at a flow chart. So now let's look at it on a demonstration board. This is a, a mock-up of an actual conversion. Grab my little test light. So what we have, starting on this side right here, we have our 12-volt battery down here. This is the input to that 12-volt battery. So I'm going to hook the uh, alligator clip to the negative. And hopefully you can see that light up. So we have 12 volts right here. This is our 12-volt auxiliary battery. And so this terminal strip here is just a bunch of negatives. And this is a bunch of unswitched 12 volt. And I think I mentioned that to you before. We have switched and unswitched 12 volts. If I didn't, I'm going to. So this just comes from my battery over here to this terminal switch. So these are all unswitched 12 volts. This is our fuse block. Notice no power there. It's not on. It doesn't have power until we turn on the ignition. So I turn on the ignition, and now I have power to the fuse block. What we have is, and we'll go into more detail on all these things, but we have what we call a power relay here. This power relay is energized by the ignition. So we just find uh, an ignition source. If the car had, you know, an electric fuel pump, that's perfect. We'll take off from that fuse because we're not going to have an electric fuel pump anymore. And that will be the source for our coil on our relay. And of course, we'll talk about relays in depth later on. But anyway, that's the only load is this small little milliampere load of our coil in our relay, but once we turn on the ignition, then that provides power to our fuse block, okay? Now, there's a few things that are, you know, energized all the time. For instance, if you have, you know, an alarm system on your car, a clock on the radio, um, remote entry, all those kind of things, those are, are powered all the time. While well, on our conversion, our instrumentation is powered all the time. And this AVC2, which we'll get into that more later, it basically uh, is the communications link between our EVSE, the charge station, and our uh, charge port. But it has power all the time. So right here is the 12 volt in. You can see it's energized with the ignition off. So basically those are the only two things that are on on our conversion when the ignition's off. Now, when I turn on the ignition, we like to have something to indicate that the ignition's on because there's no noise. Right now I can feel the, the, the fans blowing on our cooling system here, things like that, but in the vehicle, you won't. You'll have no indication. We've got a little light right here, probably can't see it, but just to show that, uh, that the power's on. So let's follow that path like we did with the flow chart. So we now have power to our fuse block. And the next thing is our safety interlock which is controlled by this AVC2. So, you know, it's got that 12 volts, and then there's a little built-in relay in here. And if the vehicle were plugged in, if we were plugged into our charge port, there would be power here, and that would activate our safety interlock relay. And it would open up that relay. So right now, we should have power, if I can get in there without shorting things out. Yep, 
So we have power going through our safety interlock relay, which means that that power is going to go through the relay up here to our inertia switch. And if that inertia switch were triggered, we wouldn't have power beyond that. But the power is going to come out of the inertia switch, and from there it's going to go to our instrumentation here, which is going to be programmed to our low voltage cutout. And if the battery pack voltage was, you know, uh, at that limit or beyond, uh, we wouldn't have any power to our um, controller. And so the chaos I input is this blue wire right here. I can see I have 12 volts right there. So in order to have 12 volts right there, means that my safety interlock isn't triggered, my inertia switch isn't triggered, and my low voltage system isn't triggered. So let me, uh, let me trigger the uh, inertia switch. I don't like doing that. Anyway, whacked it with a screwdriver good. And you can see, once the uh, uh, inertia switch has been triggered, boom, no power to our KSI input. Push on the top over here to reset it. Boom, I can hear it come back. So you can see we, we have power at the KSI again. Now, here's my EVSE. I'm going to plug this into the charge port right here. This is a J1772 charge port. As soon as I plug that in, my charger comes on. Hopefully you can see the little green light there. Charger's on, my cooling fan's on. Check my KSI. Nothing. You can see the little green proximity light came on here. Now I have power here. So what happens is when I plug that in, this activates, let these two communicate, but it also triggers my safety interlock relay. And that relay's energized, opening the normally closed contact. And so my 12 volts coming from my auxiliary battery doesn't go beyond this point. So it's not going up to the inertia switch. It's not going to the low voltage cutout. And of course, it's not going to the KSI. That's the end of the road. But, but if I unplug this thing, I now have my 12 volts again. So that's our 12 volt control circuit. It comes from our auxiliary battery, goes through our power relay to our fuse block, based on our ignition being on. It goes from there, goes through our safety interlock, through our inertia switch, through our low voltage cutout, to our KSI. And like I said, this top one right here, this blue wire, that's the KSI input. Now this is replicating a Curtis uh, 1239 controller, and the 1239 controller has an external pre-charge relay and resistor. And we'll look at that in just a moment. Like I said, we'll get into much greater detail on all this much further down the workshop. But just to, to show what we have here, so you can equate that with what I described and with the flow chart, here's our battery pack. So we've got a fuse between the two packs. This is our most positive point in the packs. This would be the most negative. Here's our main disconnect. When that's on, it allows power to go to here. 
what controls this contactor is the controller. So the sequence is we turn on the ignition and we get our 12 volts here if all of our safety features aren't, none of those are triggered. We get a 12 volt KSI signal that tells the controller to come on. The controller comes on and checks the, uh, the uh, capacitors, internal capacitors to the controller. And if they're not charged, it's going to then activate this relay right here. And this is our pre-charge relay. That relay is going to close. And when it closes, it's going to take pack voltage from this point. It's going to go through this resistor, through the contacts of our relay, and to this side of the contactor. Bottom line is it's allowing a small amount of current to flow into our controller. Neighbors have to get noisy while you're trying to talk. And so that's allowing these uh, capacitors in here to charge at a, a, a nice rate. We don't have this high in Russia current. And it pre-charges those capacitors. As soon as those capacitors are charged, the controller will turn off this relay. And then once that is accomplished, it will turn on this contactor, allowing power to flow through. And we now have traction pack voltage here. This is the negative side, goes down and goes through the shunt, which is probably pretty hard to see, but we'll look at shunts and talk about them in much greater depth. The shunt basically is just going to measure our current in and out of our traction pack and from the shunt, shunt back to here. Okay, So that's the traction pack voltage and high current part. You can see, very simple. There it is. Battery pack, disconnect switch, main contactor, controller, shunt, battery fuse. Okay? The other system we talked about, remember, was the DC to DC converter. This is our DC to DC converter down here. So whenever we turn on our ignition, our key switch relay, which is this one right here, the key switch relay comes on, and what that does is that allows traction pack voltage to go to our DC or DC converter. It converts that traction pack voltage to 13.8 to 14.6 volts DC right here, which would then be connected back to our traction pack battery and be charging it whenever the ignition's on it's charging our 12 volt battery and sharing the 12 volt load. Uh, the other system we have, we looked at a little earlier, we have our charging system. Here's our charger. And of course, it's connected to our charge port. This is a J1772 charge port. We'll talk about those later on also. This is the level two standard uh, charge protocol. And we'll get into depth. There's five uh, connect, you know, pins here. We'll talk about all of that. Uh, oh, the other thing about the traction pack high voltage, high current system is, uh, you know, here's our, our our three phase AC induction motor, and so we have our traction pack connections to our controller, and coming out we have. Uh, are three phases, they're labeled UV and W, and they're just connected to UV, W on the motor. Very simple. And so, like I said, the DC to DC converter works off traction pack voltage, but it's much less current draw. Only uh, an amp or two, okay? And, uh, and then, of course, our charger, the input's connected to our charge port, the output, is connected up to our, you know, one side goes to one side of the shunt and the other side is going up here to one side of our switch. So when we turn this off, it disconnects our pack from the rest of the system. The only other thing that we have that we usually include in the conversion is a trickle charger. So when the 
vehicle sits for any period of time, you plug this in, it's hardwired, and it just maintains your 12 volt battery. Let's look at a couple other systems real quick. We've got uh, our throttle right here. That's our throttle that goes into our controller. We'll talk about all that wiring and everything later on. Uh, this is our cooling system that cools the uh, controller or inverter. Uh, so we have uh, a reservoir, a pump, chill plate behind the uh, controller here, and then our radiator and back to our reservoir. Um, the other thing we have is we have electronic reverse. So the blue light indicates reverse. So when this is switches down, it default is forward. Flip that up. Now the motor will turn in the reverse direction, causing the car to go backwards. We have a little indicator light to remind us that it's in reverse. So that's kind of, you know, a, a, a quick glance at the big picture. All of this will be revisited as we go forward, not just on our uh, demonstration board here, uh, but, but in the sand rail and in actual vehicles. So just kind of, you know, a little bit uh, another, you know, aspect of the big picture, just so that everybody kind of understands a little bit about what I'm talking about. And of course, like I said, all these systems will be discussed in detail as we go forward. So stay with me.